In this brief video, I am going to discuss Harry Frankfurt's classic counterexample to the widely accepted model of human freedom and moral responsibility in his 1969 work, Alternate Possibilities and Moral Responsibility. Let's get started. First, let's discuss the model of human freedom and moral responsibility that Frankfurt addresses. Let's call this the normative model to call attention to the fact that this way of looking at human freedom and moral responsibility is both widely accepted and believed to be the way that we should look at this phenomenon. The normative model uses the following logic. A person is morally responsible for an outcome only if that person is responsible for bringing that outcome about by performing some action, which is to say, if that outcome was caused by that person's action and that person was responsible for that action, then that person is responsible for the outcome. This means that you are responsible for an action only if you could have done otherwise and performed that action. It also means that you're responsible for an outcome only if you could have done otherwise to bring that outcome about by performing some action. Or shorter, you are responsible for an outcome only if you could have done otherwise. Therefore, as a principle, you are morally responsible for an outcome only if you could have done otherwise. To express the logic in the normative model more plainly and less abstractly, the thought is that the reason or explanation for why we can say that someone is morally responsible for anything is that the person was free in some important way to do something else. Let's put this in the terms of a concrete example. Suppose that there is a gunman and a target. In the case of a murder, the murder happened precisely because the murderer willingly and deliberately chose to kill another person. And to say that someone willingly and deliberately chose to kill another person is to say that he could have done something else. Which is to say, if the gunman could have refrained from pulling the trigger, then the gunman was responsible for pulling the trigger. Now, let's set up Frankfurt's strategy. To do that, let's see the raw logic for the normative model, which goes like this. A person, S, is morally responsible for an outcome if and only if that person could have done otherwise. Frankfurt's strategy is this. If we can show that someone is morally responsible for something and they couldn't have done otherwise, then the normative model is false. So Frankfurt's paper discusses some ways that intuitively we would agree that someone is morally responsible for what they do while also agreeing that it was impossible for them to do otherwise. If we can show that, then we have good reason to reject the normative model. Here is the example that Frankfurt uses. Call it the evil neuroscientist example. Imagine that an evil neuroscientist, unbeknownst to you, has implanted a series of microchips in your brain. Maybe it happened for all you know during your last dentist appointment when the dentist put you under. In any case, by pressing certain buttons, the evil neuroscientist can make you do whatever she wants you to do. You're effectively a puppet. Now, before getting too deep into the evil neuroscientist example, let's get clear on the normative model example. Here we have two possible worlds. In world A, the gunman pulls the trigger and the target dies. If the gunman could have done otherwise by refraining from pulling the trigger, then the gunman is responsible for pulling the trigger. And since the gunman is responsible for pulling the trigger, then the gunman is morally responsible for the death of the target. That same logic would apply in world B, such that if the gunman had refrained from pulling the trigger, then the target would be spared. And if the gunman could have pulled the trigger, then the gunman was responsible for not pulling the trigger, and therefore was morally responsible for the target being spared. Now let's add the evil neuroscientist. In this modified case, the evil neuroscientist can push a button. When he does, 
he activates implants in the brain of the gunman, which causes the gunman to pull the trigger, preventing him from doing otherwise, and resulting in the death of the target. According to the normative model, the evil neuroscientist is responsible for the gunman pulling the trigger, because the evil neuroscientist caused the gunman to do it, and prevented him from doing otherwise which therefore makes the evil neuroscientist morally responsible for the death of the target. And recall, Frankfurt's goal is to show that the normative model is mistaken by explaining how someone could be morally responsible but couldn't have done otherwise, expressed otherwise, if it's possible to be morally responsible even if you couldn't have done otherwise, then the normative model is mistaken. Okay, now here's Frankfurt's counterexample. Suppose that, for whatever reason, the gunman wants to kill the target. And suppose that, for whatever reason, the evil neuroscientist wants him to kill the target too. As the gunman pulls out his gun to shoot the target, the evil neuroscientist is waiting to force him to pull the trigger just in case the gunman changes his mind. But the gunman doesn't change his mind. The gunman wants to kill the target. So the gunman pulls the trigger and the target dies. Intuitively, it seems like when the target dies, the gunman is morally responsible for killing the target because the gunman and no one else is responsible for pulling the trigger. However, Recall that the evil neuroscientist is waiting to force him to pull the trigger, just in case he changes his mind. This means that it was impossible for the gunman to do otherwise than he did do. Therefore, this is a case where intuitively we would want to say that someone is morally responsible for what they did, even though it was impossible for them to do otherwise. And therefore, Contrary to the normative model of human freedom, moral responsibility does not seem to depend on the ability to do otherwise. Thank you for watching, and until next time, take care.